you alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, we're live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Uh, we're live. Well, I should say good evening, first of all, to Janie Bradford. And good the evening. first lady of Motown, Claudette Robinson. Yeah, I feel like we should have a round of applause for that. Yay. <laughs> So you you guys are now live on Facebook. So how are you, Janie? How are you? I'll come and speak to you afterwards. Oh, I'm I'm great. I'm just great. Um, you know, waking up early in the morning to talk to your people late at night. So hey, yeah. this works for me. <laughs> and Claudette, how are you? Looking glamorous and gorgeous, and so do you, Janie, as well. <laughs> I am doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah. It's a great day. We're interviewing for you. Yeah, well, it's, it's an absolute <laughs> honor to have these ladies of Motown. So what I intend to do is just um, start off, I suppose, from the beginning and we'll work our way to the present. How does that sound, ladies? Sounds great. Great. OK, because uh, I'm looking forward to hearing all about this. Now, Janie, you were there from at Motown from the outset, am I right? Yeah, we both were. Only she was on the other side of the fence. She was the artist, and I was inside as a writer and worker, employee, scrubbing floors and whatever. <laughs> yes, well, I gather that you, there was no hierarchy at um, in Motown. You had to, you know, sweep the floor. It didn't matter who you were. You all had You're to right. You had to do whatever needed to be done, yes. Yes, and very, very gaudy. Was your boss wasn't a one? Yes, one. and still is. <laughs> still is a legend. <laughs> and Claudette, I yes. gather, if I'm right, weren't you the person that um, founded the Miracles and they were called the Matadors before they became the Miracles, before you got to Motown? Uh, no, that's not correct. Smoke oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, there. there probably has been erroneous information that was out there, but... The guys, Smokey, Bobby, Ronnie, Pete, and my brother, Emerson Rogers, were the Matadors. I had a sister group called the Matadorettes. Oh, wow. And it was five girls. Yes. So when my brother joined the Army, uh, it was a space open. They wanted another voice. And since they rehearsed in our basement, and uh, which I think they asked me to be in there so they'd have their <laughs> space for rehearsing. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, they asked me to, Smokey actually, actually asked me if I would go to the audition with them. Mm. And uh, I wasn't sure, but I did. And uh, that's when we actually were turned down by the people we went to see. But Mr. Gordy happened to be there. And he asked, um, you know, who we were and he liked the songs and all that, but we didn't know who he was. But Smokey knew who he was because Smokey always had aspirations to be a songwriter. So he had looked at the magazine uh, Hit Parade and, you know, it listed not only just the lyrics, but also the writers. Yeah. So that was our first introduction to uh, Mr. Gordy. And uh, from there is history until now, 2021. Yes. And when Smokey became... asked you to be in the group, did he also ask you to marry him at that time? <laughs> Not that same day. <laughs> <Good question>. <laughs> <laughs> that came later on, did it? Jane, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask, how did your association with uh, Mr. Gordy come about? Well, it came about pre-Motown uh, when he was writing for Jackie Wilson. And uh, yes. my sister was also a circuit singer, whatever they call it, Chitlin circuit singer, like Jackie at that time. Mm -hmm. And so when Jackie got his hit, he came by the house and asked my sister to go with him that night and meet the writer who had written Repetit. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my mind, since Jackie was a friend of ours, he was just a friend, but whoever wrote that song was a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to meet this celebrity. So I begged him, please let me go. He said, you're not old enough. I said, put on some of my sister's clothes and look older, please. So finally he relented and let me go. And that's when I met Mr. Gordy, who was just a human man. <laughs> I, I guess I thought he should have wings and a halo and all that. But really he did because he eventually became my angel. He's my angel. Yeah. 
I'm sure a lot of artists, Motown uh -huh. artists, felt the same about him as well, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Because he took all these kids off the streets lots and gave them opportunities. Oh yeah, it was it was open door uh, policy like that. Whoever came in got an audition or or opportunity to work there or whatever. It was um, real, you know, touching the community at the beginning of the time. And as we grow, like any company, you grow into a big company. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when we moved to LA, but Detroit, we were very very close knit family. Everybody knew each other, mm -hmm. went to each other's homes, and so forth. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, back to you in a moment. Claudette, can you remember the Miracles scoring their very first hit single? The excitement. Uh, the ah. very first single that we actually recorded was Got a Job, which was actually on the end record label. Yes. And that was uh, George Goldner out of New York. And uh, he had been known for uh, Frankie Lyman and a teenager. So you know, we thought, oh, this is going to be great because they got a hit, so we'll probably have a hit as well. Yes. Oh, wrong. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it played pretty well, but when we got our first royalty check, $3.19. Oh. For all of us. No. <laughs> so I imagine that was a bit of a very big disappointment. Yes. Or you're just excited to have a record out. <laughs> uh, we were excited to have the record out, but when the royalties came, my thought was, I think we might need to find another career. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really glad you did. <laughs> they, were, they were placed on in records through a master deal. Mr. Gordy was managing them and he yes. uh, produced the record and all, but he sold the master to in records. That's how they were on records. Right. They were still uh, Motown involved, even though they were not on Motown label. Yeah. And of course, and he, Jamie. Oh, sorry. Go on, Claudia. I was just going to say, Jamie was the one who actually uh, knows about the signing of us to Motown, because if I'm not mistaken, she she either typed up the contracts or something to that effect. Wow. Is that correct, yeah. Jamie? Uh, yeah, because I was just going to sign Smokey and Mr. Gordon said, no, please. <laughs> 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 he just signed them all. <laughs> 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 Jamie so actually fun. now you've just told me about the now you've just reminded me Claudette about signing the artists Janie um, obviously the group the Primettes came to you a quartet uh, who eventually became the Supremes and I gather you named them didn't you or you made a selection of yeah, names I, well, it was, yeah I named them because I supplied the three names that they chose the Supremes from yes yeah uh -huh. Uh, Florence pulled the Supremes out of the hat, but I had supplied the names, yes. Brilliant. And I gather yeah. Diana Ross didn't, Miss Ross didn't like the name at first. She thought it sounded more suitable for a male group. Is that right? Or is that just hearsay? I think that's just hearsay. I don't remember any, you know, commotion or anything about the name once uh, she chose it. Uh, because in the be beginning, Florence was kind of like in control. Mm. Uh, it soon changed, but when they first came, uh, she had more say. Yeah, okay. We'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm dying to talk about everything. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I'd like to tell you is that um, Diane used to live across the street from Smokey. So when we got our hit record, yeah. She wanted to know, could they also go, you know, their group. So they came over to my house and actually auditioned for us to see if we thought they were good enough to go see Mr. Gordy. Yes. And did you think they were good enough? <laughs> <laughs> you loved the idea. What did you I say? We'll move on from that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, they made it in the end, in the end. Yeah. In, <laughs> in the end. end. In the end. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how, Janie, I mean, um, what was, because I know that you wrote the foreword for my Diana Ross book, and um, there was quite a funny story in there about you and the teenage Diana Ross uh, driving around in a car that you'd hired under Barry Gordy's name. Is that right? Can you that? Well, yes, it was like a Saturday, and we both ended up at the um, Pittsville building, which is the recording studio. And there was a few people in there recording, but nobody else wasn't like through the week when all the employees are buzzing around, actually nothing to do. 
and we said we were bored. And so Diana said that we could rent a car. <laughs> I said, we can't rent a car. We don't have no money. So she said, we can go and rent the car in Motown's name. And by the time the bill come and Barry yell at us, we'll have our checks and we can pay for the car. So that's what we did. <laughs> and that's what happened. By the time the bill came, we had the money to pay for it, but we still got scolded out. You still got, but you didn't get sacked though. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> oh, you didn't get fired, thankfully. We didn't get fired. Not for that. I probably got fired about 50 times, but I <laughs> never left, so they just kept paying me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. Um, and Claudette, am I right? Because I hope I am right here. Well, your first hit singer, because it was Motown's first R&B hit, was Shop Around. Was that the Miracle's first major hit single, or had you had? I know you had to get a job out before that. Uh, we had a couple of hits along the way, but uh, Shop Around became Motown's first million seller. Yeah, and so that's how our. After that, actually, everybody started coming to Motown thinking that it was something in the studio mm -hmm. that would make a hit record. Yeah. But what we what people probably don't know, we didn't always record in Studio A. Mm -hmm. We recorded in Chicago. We recorded in New York and mm -hmm. wherever, you know, something was available at the time. But most of the hits after that were in stu from Studio A at Motown. Yeah. His it's on my to-do list to come and visit. I do need to come and visit. I've been saying that for years, haven't I, Jamie? Because we've been speaking for quite a long time on Facebook, haven't we now? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, now, now, Shop Around was the first, like she say, uh, number one, a uh, million seller. But they had <laughs> way over there. Uh, there was a pretty big hit, too, uh, nationally on Motown. And then Bad Girl yeah. was, was a good hit. Yeah. So they, they were known uh, before Shop Around. Everybody knew who they were. Yeah. Uh, not that they cared, but they, <laughs> 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 they didn't know who they, who they were. They were kind of popular around there. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And Janie, you obviously wrote, because I know I'm sure you're bored of talking about this because so many people have spoken to you about it before, but I can't not mention that classic song, Money, That's What I Want. Because I know, did Marv Johnson have the first single out, but Money was the first, Motown's first hit single. Is that right? Yes, Marv Johnson had come to me, but again, he was a master deal, like uh, the Miracles were. He was a UA artist. Ah. Uh, that his song was not on Motown. Mm. And I met, because there's so many people that have covered Money, That's What I Want over the years. I mean, you've got obviously yeah. the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Supremes even had a go on it. I'm sure some of them. Muddy Waters, uh, Waylon Jennings, you name it. All all genres have covered that song, and I hope they continue to cover it. <laughs> <laughs> you should be got to retire on that with all the amount of groups that have covered it. Now. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Claudette, um, one of the uh, really interesting stories reading that lots of um, biographies of different Motown artists. Uh, and Janie, I know you'll remember this. Uh, the motor, did you go on the Motor Town Review? Oh, no, no, I did not go. I had to stay in the office and send oh. them the contracts that they forgot or whatever it was. <laughs> they needed more money and whatever. I was stuck in the office. Oh. But no, I didn't go on the review. It was fun. <laughs> it was yes. Fun. <laughs> what about you, Claudette? You, did you go on the Motown Review? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. I <laughs> went probably on... Um, I think all of them actually, yeah. uh, because it was a, a very long tour. The very first tour was like a 30 day tour mm -hmm. that ended a little short because of an accident that occurred. Oh, I yeah. do. Was that one of the musicians? Yes. Yeah, I do. Was it Miss Bowles? Beans, Beans Bowles. Yeah, I did write that in the Diana Ross book. I do remember that because one of the things I wanted to touch upon, um, not to put a downer on it and stuff, but um, you were, all the Motown artists had life-changing experiences in the fact of um, the racism that you encountered along the way. You know, service stations that wouldn't allow you to use the toilets and stuff. Is that correct? 
uh, not only just the toilets, we couldn't, for some places, we could not even stop for gas. Oh. Uh, we had to get on our way. We were also not allowed to go into the restaurant to order sandwiches or whatever, even going sometimes through the back door. They didn't allow it. No. So what did you all do? Use adult diapers? <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you're young, you can hold. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know Florence Ballard. She, Florence Ballard had um, quoted, there was a quote from Florence Ballard that she basically, they'd made some of the artists line up in a queue and use a bucket. And then that person would have to host, um, you know, would have to host the bucket out and then use it afterwards. And I know it's not very pleasant, but I just think how appalling. I can't believe that that sort of thing used to happen. And of course, the segregation, the lines on in like, like arenas and venues that you play, that would there be a line for like blacks on one side and whites on one side. Is that right? You mean in the for the venues that we played? Yes, that's it. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Many times uh, what they would do, it depended on how the venue was set up. Mm. Sometimes if it was like one floor, there mm. would be a rope down the middle blacks on one side, whites on the other. Mm -hmm. And what actually stopped that is one day, Smokey said, we are not going to play anymore. We're not gonna do another show with the people being divided because the kids wanted to just dance with each other. You know, they didn't care what color you were. Yeah, and uh, we it was a scary thing to do it because we didn't know what was gonna take place. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, they took the rope down and that was one of the first times that um, the audience could just join in and dance with whomever they chose. Well, well Smokey not that. only said it to you guys, but he said it to the people in charge, didn't he? Right, right. Of the dancers, yeah, that weren't coming yeah. back unless they took the ropes down. So right. Smokey, Superman. Okay. Yeah, go Smokey, yay. <laughs> well, it was a good thing, it really was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, everybody's legs were shaking backstage, though, believe me, because they didn't know if the police were going to come and use those billy clubs or what. Yeah, because wasn't there a point where you got, uh, I'm sure Bobby Rogers had said it, because um, I spoke to Bobby Rogers once on the phone, oh, it was about 10 years ago, and that was to talk about Diana Ross um, for a tribute. So I spoke to Bobby Rogers, oh, yeah. So um, he'd actually said in a, quote that basically you were all got you got shot at at one point is that right oh shot at yes oh. uh yes and the thing that was a real tragedy for that mm -hmm. is when they looked at where the bullet had entered it was only three inches from the main gas line you know pipeline in the car in the bus actually uh, it must have been so had that had it been just a few inches more we wouldn't be here talking to you today. I wouldn't be here talking to you today. No, it's absolutely awful. Okay. Jamie, um, just moving on to some um, more cheerful things. The young Marvin Gaye, I, can I go reel off some artists to you? Huh? Can I reel off some artists to you? I was going to ask you some memories on the young Marvin Gaye, for instance. No, don't do that in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I love the song you wrote, by the way. Um, what would Marvin say? Very good with Marilyn um, McLeod. Uh, the the recent one, yeah. But yeah. that one I wrote uh, was it too busy thinking about my baby? Too busy yeah. thinking about my baby. Well, that's one of my favorite Marvin Gaye songs. So that's why I had to bring him up. <laughs> oh yeah, he was he was a doll. He was he was a perfect gentleman, an angel. I couldn't stand him being a perfect gentleman. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was, I think naughty, he was naughty. loved by, by just about everybody around there because he was really a good sure. guy. Yeah, I heard all the ladies fancied him. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, the tongue was hanging out, they panned and all that stuff, but that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, the Marvelettes, I know the Miracle scored the first um, number one R&B hit, but the Marvelettes <laughs> actually did the first pop huh. number one hit. Am I right with that? Mm-hmm, yes. Because I don't think the Marvelettes get their credit sometimes. What do you think? Well, no, me? they get too much because everybody said it was the Marvelettes' first number one. They don't say pop R&B. When it was Miracles had the first number one before. Ah, so, so yeah, they get confused. You have to let people know they had the first pop. 
but the Miracles had the first R&B number one. Yeah. yeah. And it, I've got to say, it took the Supremes quite a while because Smokey wrote for the Supremes. He wrote, um, as you know, Your Heart Belongs to Me and A Breathtaking Guy before the Supremes had uh, become famous. I loved those ballads. They were kind of Latin tinged um, yeah. and they didn't catch on. What did you think of those records? Did you think they were going to be a hit? Uh, well, no, at that time they were called the No Hit Supremes. Yes, yes. <laughs> With the buttered popcorn and all those things. But then uh, Holland Doja Holland stepped in and then uh, they did not want to record their first um, Word I Love Go. They didn't want to record, they didn't like the song. The Marvelous had turned it down. Yes. And then they gave it to the Supremes. And so the Supremes not having hit was kind of like forced to cut it. And it just took off from there. And I bet they loved it after it took off, didn't they? <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Claudette, um, how many hits had you had by? Because uh, by 1964, Motown was on fire, so I imagine you were making lots of TV appearances. Um, oh yes, you? we were. We were making lots of appearances. Be it, uh, we even had a nightclub act, which a lot of people don't know. Wow. And um, we worked in a few nightclubs back east. And uh, Mr. Mickey Stevenson was the one who taught us like the harmony for the jazz songs. Mm -hmm. You know, we did things like Summertime and uh, Easy Street, um, several others. And uh, Charlie Atkins was the one who actually worked with us for like a month so that we could, um, you know, learn steps and uh, you know, have a real class act, but it didn't last very long. It was only just a short time lived. So I was kind of, you know, sad about that because it really was good. Yeah. Um, because <clears throat> was it the Supremes that made the first national appearance for Black people? Because the Ed Sullivan Show, the Supremes were the first Black act to appear on that. And that was 1964. So, I don't know first black act period, but I know first black act for Motown. They were black act for Motown, yeah. Because um, things were changing when they started rolling out their hits. That's when they started. Door started opening a little bit more. Would you say? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, Claudia, were they first for Copa Cabana? Also, or had you all oh. been there before? We you know, the first, Claudette. I'm not sure if they were first or not. I know that they were there, and mm -hmm. so were the Temptations, the Miracles. But, but I think I'm it was later sure. after. I yeah. think they were early on. Yeah, they if may they have been first. Yeah. I'd have to check that fact. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the Supremes, they went in at the end of 1965, if I remember rightly. Does that sound right to you, Janie? It sounds right, yeah. Yeah. Probably. You no, know, when you get old, those memories get fuzzy. So hey, <laughs> I'm surprised. Well, I've got to ask you both. I mean, I imagine it feels like. I mean, my childhood. Now I'm in my forties. My mm -hmm. childhood feels like another lifetime ago. It doesn't feel real now. So I imagine that must feel like that for you too. Do you feel like that? And well, you're a shoe size forty. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> forty-two, actually. No. Forty-two. I, thank God, I still remember pretty well. I still. Yeah. Recall all those things, yeah. Some things never go away. And what about you, Claudette? You know, I, I really feel um, probably regenerated uh, from day to day. You know, I have um, my grandchildren who are really like young adults now. And so it really keeps me kind of vibrant and going, you know, because I truly love life. And I'm planning to live to be 150. I want you all to know that. <laughs> in case you have a question. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful though, it's wonderful actually to be here with Janie this morning because we haven't seen each other as much as we used to, you know, because of the COVID and so everyone's been staying inside. So even though it's just on a Zoom today, I'm enjoying seeing her face. Yes. Because oh, we are really, so really, I don't know how we became such great friends, you know, because we're probably totally opposites, but <laughs> we've been friends from, goodness, what, 1958? Probably 1958 until today. Wow. I was just born in. She's, she's, she babysat me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no wow. I just saw you, Claudette, two and a half weeks ago. Well, that's a short, that's a really long time. 
We're just used to seeing each other every day. Let's go to lunch. Let's go to dinner. Right, 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 <laughs> it's right. always let's go eat something. <laughs> <laughs> Got to cut that out. <laughs> Janie, moving on a little bit uh, through the 60s. Stevie Wonder. Well, obviously, he came to Motown as a child. There's little Stevie Wonder. I imagine you've got memories of him. I do, uh, but his... Uh, coming to Motown, maybe Claudette should tell you one of her group members bought him to Motown. Oh, uh, of yes. course. Wow. Claudette. Yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie White. Ronnie White of the Miracles actually brought little Stevie to Motown. Uh, Stevie used to play with uh, Ronnie's brothers and also Smokey's nephews. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, um, you know, they... Stevie was always playing every instrument in the world, probably. And they said, oh, you know, we should take him to Motown. And that's what Ronnie did. He took him to Motown. And he was an absolute genius. Absolutely. The, and yeah. still yeah. today. Yeah. Still today. today. The rest is history, as they say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Janie, I'm going to have yes. to ask you about um, some other groups. The Temptation. The Tempting Temptation. All five of them, tall. All five of them, yes. Real tempting. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I know knew, the lineups changed a lot. I knew though, Paul yeah. and uh, Eddie before the Temps or before Motown when they were the primes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess when they just landed in uh, Detroit from, uh, uh, was it Alabama? Mm -hmm. They came from, uh, and I, I had met them and knew them. That's how I got to know the Supremes before when they were the primettes. Mm -hmm. uh, Motown was through them because they were like the uh, prime sister group. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I had a special love for Eddie and Paul because I had known them so long. It was like my big brothers. But the, the whole, whole group, even today, um, call Otis every now and then, check in on him, you know. Um, so I guess I became close with all the group because of Paul and Eddie. So. Mm -hmm. They, they were good guys. They were good guys. Some people say they were bad, but real nice bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know a few people like that. <laughs> Some people say, might say that about me. You don't. <laughs> oh, thank you, Janie. Um, Claudette, um, of all, just a general trivia, trivia thing. Um, of all the singles that you made with the miracles or the songs, is there a particular one? And also... Can you confirm, was My Guy actually written about you by Smokey? Because I, I read that Smokey had originally written My Girl for um, the Miracles to record. Uh, actually, uh, no, it wasn't oh. written for the Miracles. It actually, even though the Miracles did record uh, My Girl, and uh, of course, my guy was written for Mary Wells. Yes. Now, I would have loved to have sang that song, <laughs> but it was not written for me. Uh, my girl, of course, is, um, I would say that probably, it, I don't, he had actually uh, David in mind for the voice of my girl. Mm. And what he thought about is initially what the songs were is that the girl, is my girl. Smokey took a part of his experience or life with me and Ronnie, Ronnie White was also the co-writer. And he wrote um, his, you know, like about his wife. So the yes. com combination came together. But of course that story is not really present at this time. But I think that the best thing about it is David Ruffin really along with the other Temptations made it an international hit not only just then, but today. And yeah. you know, with their play on Broadway and all the wonderful things that they're doing, I am just, uh, I, I'm over the moon just thinking about all these young people who got together and what they've been able to accomplish. And thanks to Mr. Gordy for having a real drive and interest to keep it going. He had faith and believe that these young people could do it because you know we were not experienced we we're just teenagers thinking about the music career we were not like thinking that we were going to be in quote stars and i had no idea 
that come 2021, that we'd even be talking about the miracles. I thought that I'd be teaching school and because I wanted to be a school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Because I've got, I've got something to talk to you about later as well. Um, because I know you write a lot of children's books now as well, don't you? Well, it's not a lot, but I have had my first experience with Claudette's miraculous Motown adventure. I share it on Twitter for you. Oh, very yes. nice. I very always see you because I know I don't I know you don't control your Twitter account, but I know your PA does, so um, she'll share it and I'll retweet it to my followers as well. And okay. so I always do support you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. It was a You're lot welcome. of fun, a lot of fun. And then going into the classrooms and actually reading to the children and also, you know, having them, I went on TV stations, uh, classrooms, libraries. It was like a generated life for me because it was like fulfilling my dream of what I wanted to do earlier on. Yeah. So it's like almost like full circle in a way. I think it is. Yeah, definitely. And obviously another thing I think is brilliant about your children's books as well, it gets the name Motown out there as well to all these new young kids. Yes, because I think our young children, you know, it's a good thing for them to know because that was my first reason for writing it for children, mm -hmm. even though it's open for everyone to read it. But I thought what particular entity has Motown not really tapped into the most? And my thought was our young children of today. So I thought, well, I know they probably don't know anything about Claudette Robinson, the first lady of Motown. So okay. let me just give them this story, my story in a fantasy way. And that's how I came about writing the book. Wonderful. And have you got more in the pipeline? Uh, yes, I do. I'd like to maybe finish with a couple more to finish the story. But also, I'm still working on that biography for the last 30 years. <laughs> I can't wait. I had read about it. It's supposed to be coming. Actually, that's a good question for Janie. Janie, have you ever considered writing your... I'm sure I might have asked you this before, but would you ever pen your memoirs of Motown, your Motown memories, or what stays behind closed doors stays behind closed doors? What stays behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. Quite I, well. I, I know too much. I was there and kind of in the center of everything, seeing everything and everybody. And um, I, I had never thought about writing a book. If I did, it would be just about the music of Motown. It would not be about the uh, people and their ups and downs and whatever. Because yeah. I have to tell about me. What do you think? No. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you've got lots of stories to tell and adventures and memories. Yeah, <laughs> well, but I, you know, I never, never thought about it. I oh, do have short? a documentary that's coming out next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's it's in the uh, process of being edited now. So hopefully it will be before June of next year. Hopefully. Oh, fingers crossed. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, very exciting. Janie, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to, do you mind if I go back to Diana Ross a minute? I don't mind at all. <laughs> um, because I always think, it's not to be controversial here, um, but I always think there's room to, in building an artist up, you don't need to knock another artist down. There's a lot of Supremes fans and lots of myths out there now, and lots of people have their favourite Supremes. It still goes on to this day. Um, um, do you think there's been a lot of finger pointing at Miss Ross? And do you think she's had an unfair time of it? Because she did have a, a lot of bad press run at one point. I, I do. I do. I, I do think there's been a lot of finger. My thing on Diane is that uh, she's aggressive. She's always been aggressive and forward. Had it been a man, that's what he would be. But being a woman, she's a bitch. Yes. Uh, I admire her so much for where she's been and what she's done and what she's come through and who she is today. That's just my personal thing on her. But when I, when I look at her and see, I mean, she had some missteps like everybody. She's human. Uh, but I, I definitely admire the lady, uh, what she's accomplished. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Claudette, is, would you like to say any words on Diana Ross? Well, she has uh, reached the height of just, you know, phenomenal uh, 
if her her presence and her wonderful work that she's done because she is truly what I consider a star. Yes. You know, she's extremely talented and uh, you know she just moved right along. You know it was a slow start but when she got it going she did not stop and she like still, still amazing. Yeah. That's great because I just think it's sad when some critics um, criticize her singing because she hasn't got uh, and this isn't a criticism of her it's because she hasn't got the big booming pipe you know big pipes of Aretha Franklin or something some critics tend to criticize her for you but, know. but she made it without that yeah she, yeah she, that's what I mean I she, thought yeah uh -huh. I, was, I was gonna say that as well because you know when I when they wanted me to be like the lead singer and you know to do a lot of leading and all that I really pushed back on that because I didn't I don't have that Aretha Franklin Gladys Knight Patty LaBelle voice. I just have Claudette's voice. And what I had to recognize is that was good enough. Yes, of course. And it's unique. I don't think you should, I don't think you should compare because I just I like all the Motown artists. Yeah. I love all the Motown artists on different levels. I mean, you've got the four tops, you've got Mar from the Vandellas, the Marvelettes, the Temptations, the Miracles. Why compare? Why can't you just enjoy them all? That's how I personally see it anyway. Well, I think the uniqueness of each one having their own individual voice is oh. the, best, the best that you can have. Well, because that's it. It gave them an identity and a focus, didn't right, it, I thought? Right, because it would be, to me, it would be boring if every song that you heard, everybody sounded alike. Yes. All the girls sounded alike. All the guys sounded alike. But I think what's really unique that for Motown and all the artists, they each have their own individual sound. And that, to me, is what makes it wonderful. Definitely. And you magical mean. as well. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Miraculous. Yes. <laughs> Miraculous, yes. I don't like the way you put that in there, then. <laughs> Jane, can I, I haven't, there's another group I haven't spoke to you about yet. Uh, the Four Tops, because Levi Stubbs, wow. I mean, I say that about David Ruffin and all the other singers as well, but... Levi Stubbs, he does have a, he did have a powerful voice, didn't he? Well, just yesterday, or day before, was this week, a day or two ago, I listened to Levi sing, I Believe in You and Me, and I wanted to cry. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just so moving, the way he sang it. I mean, Levi, he, he was the voice. He mm. was the voice. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, because I thought Martha Reeves, she had a kind of, the Aretha Franklin kind of powerful voice, didn't she? I thought very soulful. Very, very, very soulful, but not. It was a step above uh, Diane. Yeah, uh, Diana. Sorry, I've been known a thousand years, <laughs> <laughs> Diana. Uh, but it wasn't as soulful as you said, uh, Gladys Knight or whatever. But it was her own, like Claudette said, her own identity, her distinct voice. You knew that was Martha when yeah. she started singing. Yeah. See, now a lot of, in the mid 60s, I think it was around 1967, a lot of the groups started changing their billing to sort of include the individual singer. Mm -hmm. Now, I read that Mr. Berry Gordy did that because obviously it was a business thing. If you had a singer, a lead singer and a group, you could demand a higher uh, salary for the group at where they performed. Is that right? Now that I don't know because I don't know anything about money wise that it, but they were getting just of what I could beg them out of once they got home. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you that when there was the main change for uh, the miracles, uh, Mr. Gordy thought, well, one of the things that was happening actually was groups were going around impersonating other groups. That was the first thing that happened. And so it was like, if you had one person that stood out, for instance, in our group, Smokey was the lead singer. If you didn't have Smokey there, you would know that it was a, a fake uh, artist, fake group. Yeah. And he also told us that we would make more money, and uh, which was true. We actually did make more money. Oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was very different because we, we were a group, the Miracles. We always voted on everything. 
with, from all five of us. Yeah. And when they got ready to vote for the name change, the person who didn't hold up their hand actually was me. Oh. I just didn't think, I, I felt like it would make the group fall apart because I'd seen groups before and they just never stayed together after one, the lead singer stepped out and became whoever they were. And uh, it didn't happen, fortunately, for the miracles. Of course, at that time, uh, Mr. Gordy and Mr. Robinson had uh, made a, I don't, I don't know if a deal with each other or whatever, that I should come off the road. And the reasons for that is that I had had several miscarriages. And so they thought that my health was suffering. And, you know, and again, I didn't raise my hand for that either. I was not ready to go quite yet, but uh, it, it all worked out. I have two beautiful children and three lovely, lovely grandchildren. And, uh, you know, I'm blessed. You're happy. Great. Okay. Um, Janie, motor. Well, I'm going to ask you both about this as well. Were you both there for motor? Claudia, I'm sure you performed Motown 25. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Because yeah. that was a great night. I remember that being quite a big event on UK television at the time. That was the first time, actually, I got to, saw, to see all of you performing in person. I'd only heard you on records up until that point. And, and then uh, my mom showed me Motown 25, and I was wow. And Michael Jackson doing his Billie Jean. Wow. Yeah, well, that was the breakout for him. But I don't think any show before or after have compared uh, to the Motown 25. Definitely that was not. the show. That was the Motown show. And yep. a lot of the artists that had left, they came back to be a part. In fact, the Jackson Five, they were now on Columbia Records, I think, uh, and uh, came back to be a part of the show. So, uh, oh, yes, of course, Diana Ross would have been on RCA at the time. Yeah. So at the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Janie, that's just reminding me. Sorry, oh, Diana Ross again, but I've just remembered, Janie. Um, speaking of RCA, you actually um, co-wrote a song for her with Freddie Gorman called I Am Me. I Am Me, yes. Yes, and she turned yeah. it. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I somebody told me where Diana Ross was at some hotel under what name. I said, great, I'm going to send her this song. Mm -hmm. So I sent her a couple songs. So she called me um, one day and my daughter answered the phone and uh, she told her who she was and asked for me and Nicole came running, mommy, mommy, the Diana Ross is on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and did you think it was, a, I bet you didn't believe it, did you? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I believed, I mean, yeah. we had that kind of relationship, but she wasn't used to that, you know, just like any outsider, you know, the Diana Ross is calling, but uh, to me, it was just Diana Ross calling. Yeah. And she um, had said she uh, liked the I Am Me, one of the songs she didn't like, but she liked the I Am Me, and then she was going to record it. Uh, so from there, I mean, it was just it was just that simple, getting in touch with her where she was. Yeah, and it became the B-side to Muscles, mm -hmm. as many fans Muscles. will know, which was written uh -huh. by Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. um, and was on her album Silk Electric in 1982. Yeah. yeah. So, and that was Janie Bradford, because you've written songs for Mary Wells, Stevie, Diana, Marvin. You did Time Changes Things for the Supremes, when Time they were the No Hit Supremes. And then uh, another one, uh, Evening <clears throat> of Our Love. Uh, yes. I'm trying to remember, there was three or four songs that I did for the Supremes early on, yeah. when they were the No Hit Supremes. <laughs> <laughs> and that soon changed, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Claudette. Yes. Um, I was going to ask you, because I'm taking you back again just a little bit, um, the Apollo Theatre, because that was a very sort of, um, I heard you had to really be good to make it at the Apollo, otherwise they would boo and throw things at you and stuff. Um, they found that out. Yeah. <laughs> did you find that out? <laughs> well, actually, we, we did not, but we almost, oh, uh, we, God. you know, our first visit to the Apollo Theater was in 1958. Oh, before, and, yeah. Yes, and Mr. Gordy was our manager at that time, and um, <laughs> what happened is when we went to the Apollo, you know, we were really green, we didn't know what, we knew how to sing, and that was it. We had no real choreography. 
And uh, the gentleman that owned the theater actually called Mr. Gordy to ask about re returning the money. Because <laughs> 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 well, he said, these kids don't even know how to get on and off the stage, you know, because what they say is, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the miracles, and, you know, three from stage right, two from stage left. And we would get on, but our routine, excuse me, routine that we had made for ourselves, what we do, the music would just be playing, 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 playing. We come to the middle and just stop and clap for the next 12 bars. Well, if you know anything about the Apollo Theater, they have five, six other acts that are on the show. So, and you have four, five, six shows a day every wow. day for a week <laughs> so they don't have time for that it starts <laughs> like 10, 10 in the morning and you would be going you know uh until late in the evening you know with all the acts and sometimes i think on wednesdays they had a movie that they included short subjects you know <laughs> so he wanted us to come do our song and get off the stage but i think mr gordy was able to talk him into uh doing something, maybe paying them some extra money. I don't know, but we were very fortunate. We never were booed. They didn't throw things after us, but I think they had pity on us because here's this young girl, you know, standing out there yeah. so shy yeah. and you had these four guys and nobody really knew exactly what to do, but we really watched that first week that we were there we watched all the acts and saw what they did, you know, to make the people like get up and clap and, uh, you know, do all their uh, songs. And so we really learned from experience by really seeing what they did, asking questions, you know, what you could do to make it better. And we met a lot of wonderful, wonderful artists. One of our favorite artists at that time was uh, Jerry Butler. Oh, yes, and yes. And he really helped us a lot with our choreography to hold your hand you know, so that you're not all the way out of the wherever. <laughs> so uh, we, we, uh, we had some great times, really some great times. We went to some places that some of the other Motown acts actually never had an opportunity to go to. And they probably are saying, thank God. <laughs> 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 because we, uh, we went to some really, um, Different, let's just say different. Different, venues. okay. <laughs> different venues. Oh, but obviously as time went on, you started playing these more prestigious venues, of course, didn't you? Well, uh, fortunately for all the wonderful people out there who made it possible, because without them, none of that would have been possible because you have to have an audience and you have to have an audience that wants to see you. you know? <laughs> So uh, we had, uh, it was some really, really wonderful times that uh, I experienced, you know, on the road. And those guys really took, I'm going to say, great, great care of me. Took care of me like I was like their little princess. And I appreciated oh. it. And I love them dearly for that because all women don't have that same experience. You know, they're kind of on their own. Yes. And I was never on my own. They were always there for me. And I tell you, to this day, I miss each and every one of them greatly because Bobby, Ronnie, Pete, and Marv Tarpon, our guitarist, are all deceased. I oh, know. So uh, yeah, sad. Sad, sad for that. me. Really sad. Um, yeah, of course. And Well, actually, now you've just been talking about um, how you had no choreography or you didn't know what you were doing or anything. Uh, I'm sure you can both um remember this maxine powell who was head of artist development janie did you have uh, much to do with maxine powell i didn't have anything to do because i walked funny and ah. <laughs> <laughs> no she was basically there for the for the artists not the um, everyday working people songwriters or whatever mm. but she did um i don't know if she did anything with the miracles did she work with you guys for that uh, actually, she did after, you know, a little bit after, after we had been out there for a while. Yeah. But uh, we met, Smokey and I met Miss Powell, Mrs. Powell, uh, in 1959 because she was a true entrepreneur and she had uh, what they called a hall. And so when we got married, we had our reception at uh, her venue, you know, her, her, uh, her business. 
Yes. And uh, that's how we first met her. We met her in 1959. So we knew her work, you know, we knew all the things that she did and we actually knew her before she came to Motown for artist development and helping the other acts and especially the girls, you know, to be, well, it wasn't just the girls, it was girls and guys, mm. you know, to be able to um, present themselves better. And she did an excellent job and so did Charlie Atkins. Yeah. And of course, Janie, um... Holland Doja Holland, I haven't mentioned them yet. Of course, well, we did briefly earlier, but Holland Doja Holland, they went on to write so many hit singles for. Um, I don't think they did for the Miracles because Smokey wrote the Miracles songs. Didn't they, they wrote a couple of things. Come around here, I'm the one you need, and Mickey's Monkey. Yes, so they wrote a couple Mickey. of things for the for the Miracles. They uh, wrote basically for everybody. But uh, like in the beginning, I think Brian Holland was writing with the uh, Robert Bateman, Freddie Gorman. Uh, just feeling their way. Uh, Lamont was still with um, Anna Records, Gwen Gordy's sister, but when they folded, they came over to Motown. That's how he came over. And Eddie Holland was there as an artist himself. Mm -hmm. So after fumbling around, Lamont and, and Brian both were music people and they needed the lyricist. So Eddie joined them as the lyricist. That's how the three of them came together and they were like on fire the minute they started uh, till they finished. And on fire, speaking of being on fire, I'm sure you both had the experiences with the Funk Brothers, Motown's in-house band. Yeah, uh, early on, well, the one by one, there was uh, Benny Benjamin, the drummer. Uh, I think Johanna was the first to come over. He had a jazz band and he mm -hmm. brought a couple of members from his band over to Motown for the sessions. And that's how the Funk Brothers began with Jameson, James Jameson. Joe Hunter, uh, Benny Benjamin, and I think there was another guy, but I'm doing pretty good for my age to remember those names. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway that's how they began. And they were basically uh, the sound because none of, I will maybe one or two, but I was going to say none of them actually read music. They all played by feelings. And uh, the writer or the producer would give them a lick or a direction and they would just take it and go with it. So. Uh, they really helped out some of those songs to become what they were. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I love the funk robbers. They were like unsung, well, they're not unsung heroes now, but they were once upon a mm -hmm. time, weren't they? I love their documentary, Standing in the Shadows of Motown, by the way. Yeah, um, it was a good good visual, a good entertainment. Uh, a lot of it was, yeah, misstepped, but <laughs> it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was good to say the least. It was it was great uh, because uh, people were saying, well, why didn't they get credits? But when you think about it, uh, in the late 50s, early 60s, none of the musicians got credit. Look at Capitol Records. Look at Columbia Records. Look at RCA Records. Who were the musicians? Mm. You don't know. So yeah. naturally, Motown being new, we knew less than they did. Mm. Uh, yes. So when as they progressed and they had their own identity, then they began to get their credits. Yeah. Of who they are. And so they should. Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. Credits and their pay. <laughs> <laughs> the pay is most important. <laughs> Claudette, um, I've got you written down, I've got it down as you leaving the Miracles in 1971. Is that right? Well, I actually stopped performing in 65. Yeah. But continue to record on all the records till 72 when Smokey left the group and became uh, retired for a few years. And then he started performing again and then he retired again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's going stronger than ever. You know, he's out there and he's doing more than he did even when we were in the Miracles. Wow. Do you Good. keep in touch with, uh, do, you, do you still see Smokey re regularly? I wouldn't say regularly, but we do see each other um, quite often. I mean, enough for people who are really not together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> it's good that you've remained friends. Well, you know, we have children and grandchildren together, so that's not the only reason, but it's uh, always nice to stay in touch. You know, I have I have no problems with uh, his life or whatever. You know, I live, I'm living mine and he's living his. And I think we're both doing it well in yes. our own way. So Definitely. Great. 
Okay, thank you, Claudette. Janie, <laughs> yeah. um, 1972, was that when Motown moved to LA? Was it because of, I know, I'm sure it was just one of many things, but Lady Sings the Blues was on the cards by 1972, wasn't it? Yes, it was, but that was basically the final move. Some moved wow. 71, the year earlier, the majority moved in 72, and some latecomers like Claudette and Smokey came in 73, I think. They came a year later. Uh, if if they came in 72, it was late in 72. I don't think you all guys didn't move out when everybody else did, did you, Claudette? Uh, no, we did not because I did not like California. So I didn't want to move. <laughs> I, could, well, I was one of the first to hold my hand up when they said move to California. I started packing. <laughs> I, you know, I had been here many times and I just felt like it wasn't family oriented. You know, in Detroit, how we all got together and we would, you know, get, you know, play games together, go to picnics, do all those things. And Seems like California was a place where it was individuals. The wife did one thing, the husband did another, the children were doing others. And I thought, I don't really want my children to grow up in that kind of environment. But I was persuaded <laughs> after a while. And so Smokey actually went and bought a house. <laughs> it's like, we're moving. And I was like, oh. Oh no. <laughs> we did move. And I will tell, I will say, he was right and I was wrong. Oh, you were happy in great, California. Though. It's been a great place. It's, yeah. uh, I'm happy that he was the one who actually made that decision because at the time I was so against it because, you know, my mom was there and all my family and friends and I didn't know what am I going to do with two young children and, you know, he'll probably be playing golf and in the studio. <laughs> what am I going to do? But it all worked out. It worked out fine. Right. Janie, just to bring us up to date and stuff a bit more, since the Motown days, what have you been doing recently? Because I know that you do lots of HAL and Hero Awards and inducting some of the artists into... Well, the, the HAL thing came basically from uh, Motown. Uh, I sat next door to the publishing guy who the, the, at that time, he was like the song plugger. I uh, would play songs with other people and the kids would bring songs in for him to hear and he would turn them down. And I said, you know, to myself, that song could have been saved if he would said, make a little more melodic or start off with your chorus, different things. I could see where the song would be saved. And I'd say, well, I'm going to help these kids when I get the chance. And then my, my other Gemini said, when you get the chance, <laughs> just, you just have to start. And Claudia and I went to an event, I think, where we both were honored, but it was horrible the way oh. it was put together and whatever. And I said, now, if he can do that, I can do that. <laughs> so I just started off with heroes and legends. But fortunately, being in Motown, I think Mary Wilson and Holland Doja Holland, some of those people were my first honorees. I think we did the miracles and, and smoke it separately, maybe three or four times. You know, I just worked them, I used them all, and it worked. It just kept going and growing and growing. And now it's it's you know just humongous thing. Everybody knows about the Hall Awards. Uh, but the purpose of it is to give scholarships to kids in the arts. Mm. Uh, you know, they may be taking piano lessons and can't pay for them, or they may be behind the scenes uh, in the movies or, or whatever. Uh, so any form of the arts, we give scholarships to those kids. And Claudette has been there since day one as uh, the pusher man. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, wow, that sounds great, Janie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Claudette. <laughs> oh, Claudette's laughing there. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's been my honor to be a be a part of uh, Heroes and Legends. Janie, I have to really give her the honor of really uh, persevering and pursuing uh, an event because it's not easy to do what she's done. Mm. And people call me since we haven't had one for the last couple of years. People are still, are we going to have one this year? This year because of COVID, you know, it was shut down. Yeah, and. Uh, I tell you, it was one of the most amazing shows and events that you could go to. Everybody wanted to go. 
because you get an opportunity to see all the Motown family that, you know, were still here with us. And uh, that would be the one chance that you have to come and see, you know, the different artists as well all as all the other people. Mm -hmm. So um, I really enjoyed it. And um, uh, Miller London and I were the co-hosts for the um, event. And so we would present the scholarships to the young people that were receiving it. And we, the Miracles, were actually honored by Janie twice. And uh, I have my trophies. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and what the good thing about it is she gives trophies to each and every member. So you don't have to like, you know, one person get it and the other person is like, oh, I wish oh, I Oh, I see. So you all get it rather Everybody than the lead it. singer. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Um, well, actually, Claudia, I was going to say, because I found some pictures of you today, um, oh. of Hollywood Walk of Fame, when you were, yes. It uh, was that 2012 and the Miracles, um, Hollywood Walk of Fame, can you remember that? Uh, the Walk of Fame was 2019. Oh, 2019, oh, I do have to beg you. I'm, I'm sorry, 20, 2009 was- Oh, right, I thought wrong. Yeah, 2009 and then inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2013, I believe. Wow. 2013, I believe. And a Rhythm and Blues Foundation Pioneer Award as well. Uh, yes, we have been really blessed and honored. We've been uh, the Vocal Group Hall of Fame, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. Yeah. Uh, so many until I will tell you, I had no clue, no idea. Honestly, I, if you had asked me that even, let's say, 15 years ago. Do you think you're going to get a star on the Walk of Fame? Do you think you're going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I'd say, no, I think our time has passed. It's not going to happen. So the only unfortunate thing is that when we were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the only two people there, I shouldn't say the only two, it was uh, Pete and I who accepted the award and Smokey inducted us because he had been inducted uh, in 1987. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, all those years that we had not, uh, I just thought it would never happen, but it did. <laughs> it did. A really nice surprise, I can imagine. Yeah, but it yeah. would have been nice if it had happened a little earlier so that we would have actually been able to perform for yeah. the people. Because it was just Pete and I, Bobby was in the hospital, and Pete wasn't really that well, because I think he passed away uh, a few years after that. Yeah. So, okay, thank you very much. We are coming to the last couple of questions. It feels like we've been on air for about 10 minutes. It's actually been an hour and 10 minutes, but it feels like 10 minutes to me. So um, I just wanted to check. I just wanted to ask, do you, who are the Motown artists do you see today? Uh, Janie? I, who, I, well, I see... Um, <laughs> I see Martha the Vandellas, I see Claudette, I see Smokey, I see Brenda Holloway, um, did, oh my God, did see Mary Wilson quite a bit, uh, so uh, see Otis on occasion, so basically the ones that's still around, um, it's, it's a tie that you cannot untie, the, the early Motown family from Detroit, that end, we yeah. still uh, come together as family. Yeah. Because you were all there from the beginning, weren't you? Yeah, I see the I see the Hollands, Brian and Eddie Holland. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Mun just lost his wife a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. So yeah, he's been kind of recluse since then. But uh, basically, everybody is still around. Can I just ask because there was uh, some news about Cindy Birdsong being very, very ill. Not so long ago. Do you know how Cindy Birdsong's doing nowadays? I, I don't know at the moment because of certain conditions that I won't discuss. Oh, of course. We did yeah. also uh, raise money at Hal for Cindy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to kind of help her out with whatever. So right. we included her in whatever we were doing. Oh, brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Claudette? Do you still see a lot of the Mo your Motown family? I, I, I'd say probably almost the same people that Janie sees. Um, 
because I'd love to get Martha Reeves on next. I'm going to have to speak to try and get Martha Reeves on next. <laughs> Do you think she'd be, does she like this sort of thing? Do you know? I, I really don't know. Uh, Martha, you have to catch her <laughs> on a, a good day. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes she will, and sometimes she will. But uh, she probably she probably will. She needs exposure right now. Everybody will need it. People yeah. like you to keep us going. Oh, well, thank you very much. I mean, Motown will just live on forever, won't it, really? It might have worked too much. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jenny, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, I do think it's wonderful how kids nowadays know, like, there's, like, little girls that know Supreme songs and Motown songs. In fact, there was, when my, uh, there was a, a, child, a friend of mine, um, her daughter, basically, I asked her, who's your favourite band? And she told me, Motown. <laughs> she thought Motown was a group because they were all different songs. Like, no, 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 that's a company. So it's nice that it's going down generation from generation, isn't it? Yes, it is. I believe so. And I'm, I'm really thankful and more than grateful uh, because I could never have imagined as a young teenager going into show business. I, I, I never even thought about it. I thought I'd love to Living sing. Living the moment. You know, I'd love to sing, but I didn't want to go on stage. Oh. You know, I was not like, I didn't want to be the out front person. And, you know, I could have been behind the curtain singing and it would have been just fine for me. Because I was a really shy girl. You know? And you overcame it, though. That's good. I'm glad you stuck with it. I'm sure you're glad you stuck with it now, aren't you? <laughs> well, yeah, but I think the guys helped a lot. You know, they helped tremendously. Because, you know, it's always encouraging you, pushing you up. Yes, yes, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You need that, though, don't you? How can yeah. you believe in yourself and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, well, you need to believe in yourself and yeah. believe in God, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Because if you're not going to believe in yourself, who is going to believe in you? That's what my drama teacher used to tell me. Is that right? Yeah. The drama teacher was right. <laughs> yes. I don't yeah. always put it into practice, but I do try and say that. Well, come on. Yeah. Believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. That's well, look true. at you. Look at you. So if they're hosting your show, your own show, who believed you would do that? You. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. Yes. <laughs> oh. um, Janie, just and Claudette, just before we go, have you um, anything in the pipeline that you'd like to give a shout out and promote here and now? Give it a plug. Well, I would say for me, um, you know, the documentary is coming out next year. Yes, I can't wait um, for that. We're going to be relaunching the book. Um, Yay! And I hope, I don't know how long it's going to take, so I'm not going to give a time frame, is the biography. I'm and looking it, forward was, to that. Well, thank you, and uh, so am I. <laughs> yes, have I got a long way, though? Really get to work. You know, have just, you got a long way yet? Yeah. I think these things are always best when you are ready, when you feel the time is right you know when it's right to release that book. That's what I, how I felt it. Anyway. Right, right. I mean, this is a lot more personal to you because it's your life story. So mm. when it comes together, you'll know when it's the right time. Would you agree, Janie? I agree. Yeah. And well, I know that I you're not going to do an autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really, it's, it's not, it's no like tell all about other people's lives. It'll yeah. be about Claudette's life. Yeah, and I like reading things like that. And I like reading books on music as well. Janie, you know my Diana Ross book was just on her music, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was. Yeah. And that's and why that I asked Janie to write the forward for it, you see. That was good. Yeah. Oh, guys, I can't believe I've actually been speaking to the Mo ladies of Motown, Claudette Robinson and Janie Bradford. I really feel like we should have been having a round of applause now, so I'll just do it for you. You've been absolutely great, guys. Have you enjoyed the interview? I've enjoyed you so much, Ian. Okay, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> yeah, come and stay at my house, Janie. Well, that you can come and stay at my house if you want. As well in England. Um, maybe, want... maybe Janie and I can come together. You can come together and stay at mine. All right. I'm not a very good cook, though. <laughs> You're not a good cook? I'm not a very yeah. good cook. Well, I'll just get takeaways in. Pretty good. I, yeah. I get around the kitchen pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, it's been absolutely lovely. I hope we can do it again sometime, actually. So, um, I am going to try and pursue Martha Reeves. I shall let you. I shall let you know if I can okay. get Martha Reeves on. So, please right. for that. I will. 
And what I should do now, guys, is um, in about half an hour, an hour's time, I shall download the video and put it on YouTube and share it all around social media. And Claudette, I'll send it to Molly. Oh, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. I appreciate that. It's an honour to meet you, Claudette. It's an honour to finally speak to you face to face, Jamie. Oh, that's okay, Ian. Been trying for years, haven't we? We have, and we will get there. <laughs> I shall get myself over to Detroit. Uh, okay. Yes. Well, if, right. not, if not, you'll come to my house instead. That's <laughs> right. You were coming to Detroit, and I was going to meet you in Detroit. That was Yeah, years I know. What happened to that? Was, oh, finances and this and that. And we'll get there. We will get there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you have a look. Well, I was going to say, have a lovely evening. It's morning, isn't it? So have a lovely yeah. day. It's nine okay. o'clock here. Nearly. Well, thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. It's been wonderful. Oh, truly. I truly appreciate you coming on. And same with you, Jamie. So. All right. And finally, we meet. We if finally meet. And okay. it's lovely to meet. You, and I shall speak to you all very soon again. All right. And thank you. You take care, guys. And I shall keep in touch. Okay. And I'll speak to you soon. For sure. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye. You have a lovely day, guys. Thank you again. Bye. Goodbye, all. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.